back at it here tonight. Hi again, everybody. Daryl Henry alongside Matt Present. Welcome to Revs Baseball. Another cooler for this time of year and cloudy evening here at the ballpark. But the Revs getting set to try to extend their winning streak, winning the last two against Sugarland over the weekend. We'll get into that here shortly. But before we do, the big news, as many of you have heard, some significant roster moves since we left the air on Sunday afternoon and the departure of three players that had really become fan favorites over the years. Tyrell Harris had announced his retirement for a coaching opportunity. Brian Pounds traded to the Sugarland Skeeters for a player to be named later and uh, certainly some personal things in his life as many of our fans know and uh, hopefully it'll help him personally and professionally to play closer to home. Mace will get into uh, a lot of the specifics with that coming up. And Chris Cody, who was trying to rehab and get back on the mound and was still uh, some chunk of time away from being able to do so, uh, he has been released here as well. So one of the all-time greats in Rebs history, not having the return to York in 2017 that he had envisioned. The Rebs also mo moving Jose Arredondo from the inactive list to the suspended list, which means that no other team in the league can sign him. And the Rebs not really anticipating his arrival any longer at any point. The visa issues that delayed him, and uh, if he were to arrive at any point, it would certainly be a bonus. They did make an addition today as well, signing 24-year-old catcher Derek Capatillo, who had been in the red system and that gives them some flexibility most notably being able to play to hate it at first base so matt it's been really a, an emotional couple of days for a lot of folks around here to see some fan favorites go and you know, a lot of our fans were privy to those moves on sunday when those guys said so long on their way off the field tough to see them go but the Revs trying to win the third straight tonight, and uh, the guys in the clubhouse certainly resilient. It's still a, a great group of guys that are here in York. It certainly is, but like you said, an emotional day, no doubt about it. And, I mean, even for me, I've only known these guys for a month or two now, and I, I certainly felt it. Um, you know, like you said, all three of those guys, guys who are you know, such a part of this organization, such a part of the fan base, you know, really – made connections beyond the field um, and so it, it's certainly unfortunate to see them go but in all cases I think you have to look at it from the players perspective and realize that it is in fact what's best for them long term in, in all three cases I think. Yeah well the Rebs will look to get back at it tonight against Southern Maryland after the off day yesterday and we go back to Sunday's game and again we'll have much more from Mace on those roster moves coming up he went very in-depth with us on those items. But to recap, Sunday's win, back-to-back, come-from-behind wins in the late innings. And the Revs were trailing 1-0 in the seventh inning on Sunday with two outs in the inning. And Derek Robinson changed the game. Here's the 1-2. Swing and a line drive to right center field. A base hit. Witherspoon around third to score. And Mitchell goes to third. Derek Robinson. Robinson ties the game with a line drive single to right center. And it's a 1-1 game here in the bottom of the seven. And up next was Angel Franco and the 0-2. Swing and a drive the other way in right field toward the corner. And it is dropped by Benson as he crashes into the wall. Mitchell scores. Here comes Robinson. Throw home. Beats him, and he slides into the tag at the plate. But Angel Franco gives the Revs a lead. It's a double all the way to the fence in right field and a 2-1 to lead as we will be heading to the eight. Yeah, Robinson's hit came on 1-2. and two. Franco on 0-2. Oh Travis Witherspoon then adding insurance in the eight. It was the 1-0. Swing and a line drive, right center, base hit for Witherspoon. Tejeda around third, Miller the throw, it's cut off. And the Rebs have a 3-1 to one lead here in the bottom of the eighth. He started the rally last inning, and he adds an insurance run. 
Here in the eighth, Travis Witherspoon, a missile up the middle, and it's three to one here in the eighth. And then Jarrett Martin capping off a great day for the pitching staff, started by Victor Mateo, and Martin, the fourth and final reliever to finish off the three to one win. The two one, swinging a bouncer to third, one big hop to pounds, he gloves it, he fires, game over! And the Rebs take two out of three from the Skeeters, winning in come from behind fashion in back-to-back -back contests. 700th win in regular season play. And Jared Martin without a strikeout this time, slams the door for his third save. And we knew, and Brian Pounds knew, that it was his last game here in York on Sunday. He was the one to receive that ground ball and make that final play. So the Revs here tonight trying to make it three in a row. They come in 14 and 22. Southern Maryland 19 and 18. They will meet for the first time since the first week. And it'll be right-hander Curtis Parch making the start for York. 0-3 with an ERA of 7. Looking to get things turned around for himself. Right-hander Daryl Thompson goes for the Blue Crabs. He's 3-2 with an ERA of 3.47. Coming up next on our pregame, once again, we go heavily in-depth with Mark Mason on all of the roster moves from the past couple of days. So you want to hear where some of those things came from. You'll want to stay tuned. That is coming up next. First pitch tonight is set for 6.30 here at People's Bank Park, right here on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Having the gang over to watch the game? Keep them happy with great Best Jet products from your neighborhood SureSave markets. Football fans, hockey fans, basketball fans, everyone's a fan of game day party platters with 1893 deli items. Best Jet hot dogs go great with Best Jet kettle cooked chips. Or serve up a couple Best Jet rising crust pizzas with 12 packs of Best Jet soda. Throw the best game day party ever with Best Jet products. Shop Sobble's Markets in Shrewsbury, Stewartstown, Whiteford and East York, Wetzel's in Glenrock, and Nell's Market Fresh Foods in Spry. The mission of Big Brothers Big Sisters of York and Adams Counties is to provide children facing adversity with strong and enduring, professionally supported, one-to-one -one relationships that change their lives for the better, forever. It is proven that Big Brothers Big Sisters mentoring programs have a direct impact on children achieving higher aspirations, greater confidence, better relationships, and educational success, and avoiding risky behavior. Please visit afewhours.org for more information on becoming a mentor. It is time well spent. Enter Rudder's Summer of Freedom Sweepstakes today. Look for the entry star, purchase participating products, scan your Rudder's rewards card, or enter VIP information at checkout, and automatically be entered to win your choice of a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport, Ram 1500 Bighorn Quad Cab, or Dodge Challenger RT from Stetler. Drive better, drive Stetler. Free gas for a year and one of thousands of prizes, including Red Bull, Pepsi, and Pennsylvania Lottery scratch-off tickets. Must be a Rudder's VIP to enter. Rudder's, why go anywhere? Hi, this is Dan Patrick. Join me weekday mornings at 9 on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Fans, it's time to go inside the clubhouse. For the latest on your York Revolution and tonight's matchup, it's time for the Broadway Transmission Manager's Report. Now, here's the manager of the Revs, Mark Mason. All right, Mace, well, you get a back-to-back -back comeback wins against Sugar Land this weekend and uh, then some significant roster moves after the game, and we'll talk about that. But uh, Sunday's win, really, really well-pitched game. Um, and starting with Mateo, it seemed interesting from where we were, uh, the pitch selection and a lot of off-speed stuff. Was that the thing that he had the best feel for Sunday, or, or was that a, a game plan thing going in? Well, in the first inning when I was watching his velocity, I was a little bit concerned. I even said something to him after the inning was over, but that was his plan was he was trying to stay off speed and uh, and really not cut loose with his best fastball early in the game. They, they've they been ambushing us anyway with fastballs early in the count, so he tried to pitch he tried to pitch a smarter a smarter approach game, and I thought he did a good job of that. Uh, you know, his pitch count got a little bit out of hand, I thought, but but overall he did a really good job. And um, But, yeah, he was just trying to keep him off balance with the off-speed. 
Well, you get the three to one win to take two out of three in that series, and and then uh, some significant changes afterward. Um, and let's start with uh, with Brian Pounds. So you trade to Sugarland for a player to be named later. Uh, I know a lot of our fans are aware that it's been a, a really difficult probably six months for him and was was maybe being away from home tougher than any of us could have understood and and is that a big reason for the move to give him a chance to play at home well that was exactly it uh, Brian came to me Sunday morning uh, and we talked about that uh, that was one of the reasons why he didn't go to winter ball last year too he just thought he needed to stay home uh, just you know, it was, it's just a really, really tough emotional time for Brian. I know Mother's Day here um, a week or so ago in the dugout, we, we were kind of hugging, and he was pretty upset with that. And, and I understand that. I lost my mom 11 years ago, so I understand the first one, and, and it was really hard for him. So when he came in to talk to me just about trying to – he still wanted to play, he thought. He, he still wanted to play. But if he did play, he thought it would be better if he was closer to home just for a lot of reasons. There's obviously things away from the field that you're trying to take care of uh, when, when, people, when people pass away. And um, so with all that said, I mean, I talked to Gary, and uh, we were able to do a deal for Brian where he could be closer to home and play in front of his family. And as you know, every time we go to Sugar Land, he always has family there watching, you know, watching our games. So... Uh, I, I felt terrible. Um, I know he felt really bad too, and, and he said, you know, he loves it here and, and, and our relationship and his relationship with the fan base and, and everything. But it's just that's really a personal reason. And if you remember back in 2012, that was why we sent Michael Nix there and Jason Botts there. We, we sent a lot of guys to Sugarland for for personal reasons over the years, and uh, Brian was no different. You know, like a son to me, so that was really hard on me. But um, I wanted to make sure that he was taken care of, so that's what we did. Uh, and another difficult one, uh, Chris Cody, who, you know, his return was, was not imminent, um, and he was trying to get back and everything. But um, ultimately, releasing him here this past weekend, and, uh, you know, I know knowing his determination, he might resurface somewhere at some point. Uh, but how difficult would it have been um, to try to build him up with the guys that you have here and, and to try to you know, almost force that in? That can't be an easy thing, especially with, with him still being pretty far away. Well, coming into the season, Chris and I talked in the off season, and, and you know, he was almost, it'll be two years in August that he's had that surgery, and he said that he was pretty far along, and when he came into camp, he was around 45 or 50 pitches in spring training. And, uh, you know, then unfortunately he had a setback. And then once he had a setback, it just, you know, it turned into where he could actually pitch. You know, he could pitch right now, I think. But um, there's always a psychological part of coming back from an injury, which is more than the physical. But, uh, you know, it just turned into a situation where with all the roster cleaning up things that we have to do here and cut rosters by June 1st and, and all those things, I mean, he totally – he totally was on board with what we were doing. Uh, you know, it's just it was just unfortunate because of the guy that he is and his and his past here, his history with this organization that that he wasn't able to get to where he wanted to be. And and I think everybody felt bad about that. You know, especially him and and us as well. So. I mean, it was a tough weekend. I mean, I'm not going to lie, it was a tough weekend for me. Uh, guys like him and Pouncey and, you know, DePaula. Um, I mean, it was, it, it, was, it was a tough weekend for me because these guys have been with me for a while, and, and it was hard. But at the end, I mean, things always happen for a reason. And, um, you know, obviously with Tyrell leaving to retiring to take a coaching job and move into a different part of his life it was just like a revolving door in here over the weekend which was and not in a good way um every time i every time i looked up i had somebody walking in the <laughs> office wanting to talk to me about something and uh yeah, I, I didn't know if i was managing the team or if i was a psychologist or or, or, or or what i was you know but in this position you wear a lot of hats and sometimes you're the manager sometimes you're a, you're a best friend sometimes you're a sounding board 
sometimes you're a father figure. Uh, you, you just never know what it is. And that's the kind of relationship that I have with my players. And I've even had players come in here today and say to me, you know, I really appreciate what you did with Brian Pounds and Harris. And, you know, that, that says a lot about me as far as how I feel about players and what I try to do for them. So it's just the way I've always been. I want to do what's best for them. And um, hopefully that hopefully we did that this weekend. Yeah, and you mentioned Tyrell. He was the, the third really fan favorite uh, to, to have to leave this weekend. But I guess a little bit brighter note with him, uh, you see the, the passion that he has for youth coaching, and he's got a great opportunity back in California for that. That's his calling. I really believe that. Uh, we talked about that you know, over the weekend, and he, he's outstanding with kids at every age level. He's knowledgeable of the game. He brings a uh, he brings a childlike energy to everything that he does. He's a big presence. He's going to have their attention. He's going to work those kids. He's going to teach them the right way, and he'll do really well. He really will, and and I'm happy for him. These are life decisions that these guys are making in in a lot of cases, and uh, those are not easy decisions when all you've known is playing ball your whole life. So. Um, I, I tip my cap to those guys and uh, wish them nothing but the best. I told them anything I can do for them, reference-wise, any, anything at all, um, you know, just to let me know. So I hate to see guys walk out the door, but you also know guys are starting other careers. We see where Scotty e. Grimes at, you know, with his career now and a bunch of other guys that have been here. So um, yeah, I just wish everybody the best. And uh, it was it was a tough weekend, and I really needed yesterday off, to be honest with you. I probably needed it more than anybody. So um, I'm, I'm happy to be back, but, um, yeah, that was one of the rougher weekends. Yeah, no doubt. Well, today you do add a player as well, a, a young catcher who I know you wanted to bring in, Derek Capatillo, and uh, he's active for tonight. What – what can that do for the team as a whole uh, to have a third catcher, a young guy like that? What are some of the areas that that's going to help? Well, it's going to do a couple things. It, it's going to let me get to hate out from behind the plate on a regular basis because I think sometimes, you know, it, it's he, he plays, he swings the bat a little bit better when he's not behind there all the time. It gives me an opportunity to see Cruz, and uh, he's shown signs of being a really good catcher and a hitter. So I want to give him an opportunity to play. And then obviously with Derek here, you know, we'll give him some chances to catch too. He's a really young guy, um, you know, four years of pro ball, you know, Arizona League, stuff like that. So we're, um, you know, we're going to give these guys an opportunity. But, but him being here gives me the flexibility to play both the, the catchers that were here previously at the same time and, uh, and allows me to move some other guys around, especially – with, with the players we just lost this weekend. And lastly, uh, tonight you've got Tree and Fell at third. You move Burgess out to left field. Those are a couple of the, the little differences tonight. But uh, you've also got Alonzo Harris, who's on the cusp of returning. How much do you like the, the position group that's still here um, as a whole when you consider getting him back and, and the way guys have kind of turned it up a little bit? I, I, do like, I do like our group. I mean, I liked it from the beginning. Uh, we have a lot of flexibility. We have a lot of guys that are interchangeable, and they can move around the field and play. Um, Harris, you know, Alonzo took a live batting practice today, first one since he went down in Long Island, and he swung the bat well, and I wouldn't be surprised if he would be active tomorrow based on what we saw today. We're going to see how he feels when he gets in here tomorrow, but he felt nothing today, no pain, no, and he was running the bases, and he came out of the batter's box after he hit the ball and ran, you know, hard to first to second, and so, I mean, those are all good signs. He took infield, outfield the other day, threw the ball from left field to third base, home plate. So, obviously, he's a shot in the arm for us if we can get him back. He was doing really well here, and, and we've missed him for a few weeks, two to three weeks, whatever it's been that he's been out of here now. So, that'll help give us more flexibility with our roster. And, um, you know, right now we got some guys we haven't played a whole lot. So they're going to get an opportunity to show what they can do, and getting him back, that should help. All right, Mace, thanks a lot. Good luck tonight. Yep, thank you. All right, Revs manager Mark Mason on the Broadway Transmission Manager's Report. Revs have taken the field for tonight's game. All well, the starting lineups and first pitch coming up next.
You hear a lot about CPAP masks these days, but here's something you don't hear much about. Over half of the people who wear a CPAP mask for sleep stop wearing it within a year. How's that working for you? Dr. Gordon Bell would like you to hear this. York Dental Sleep Therapy has dental options that can help many of those people. If you or someone you live with is struggling with sleep apnea, visit YorkSleep.com and see how Dr. Gordon Bell can help return your home to peaceful nights of deep, restful sleep. Sleep. If you're groggy during the workday, if you wake up feeling exhausted, if you would like to get your nighttime sleep patterns back to a healthy state, get a confirmation from your doctor, then meet with Dr. Bell at his office on West Market Street in Hallam. He'll evaluate your symptoms and discuss which treatments would best suit your situation. Dr. Bell can restore restful sleep and get you feeling better day and night. York Dental Sleep Therapy. Call 316-1299 or visit YorkSleep.com to learn more. Hey Revs fans, get points or great rewards just by supporting your team through the new Revolution Rewards Program. Use the new York Revolution app to receive and earn points for ballpark food, store discounts, stadium tours, and more. Available through the Apple and Google Play stores, the York Revolution app also features team news and exclusive content, contests and promotions for Revolution prizes, online tickets purchases, live game streaming, and more. Download the York Revolution app today. Free stuff by supporting your team? That's Revs time. Your teams all the time. Sports only place for local sports. Sports Radio 1350 WOIK. Starting lineups are brought to you by Flying Feet for Southern Maryland. They will have Jose Lozada at second base leading off. Edwin Garcia, the shortstop, hits second. Corey Vaughn in center field, that's third. Michael Snyder at first base is hitting cleanup. In the five hole, Devon Rodriguez in left. Then it's Zach Cohn in right field hitting sixth. Luis Allen will catch for them in bat seventh. Patrick Palmero at third base hits eight. And Kalaika Kahua Halahala is the DH batting ninth. Again, it's Lozada, Garcia, Vaughn, Snyder, Rodriguez, Cone, Allen, Palmero, and KK for Southern Maryland, the lineup facing Curtis Parch. For the Revs tonight, they will line up like this. It'll be Derek Robinson in right field to start it. Angel Franco, the second baseman, bats second. Isaiah Tejeda will play first base and hit third. Michael Burgess in left field is in the cleanup spot tonight. Then Joel Guzman will DH. Travis Witherspoon bats sixth. He's in center. Ryan Dent back in there tonight at shortstop, hitting seventh. Luis Cruz will catch in bat eighth. Then Carlos Trienfell has the start at third base, batting ninth. Again, Robinson, Franco, Tejeda, Burgess, Guzman, Witherspoon, Dent, Cruz, and Trienfell for the Reds. Those lineups again brought to you by Flying Feet. Curtis Parch ready to go. He's 0-3 with an ERA of seven in seven outings, three starts, 18 innings, 26 hits, 11 walks, 21 Ks, opponents hitting 338. Looking to get those numbers lowered as he heads into his fourth start of the year here tonight. Our Dasher Investment Services first pitch upon us as Lozada digs in, and here it comes. And he takes a fastball strike, and we are underway. 6.34, our start time tonight here on a cloudy evening, 68 degrees. And hoping to avoid showers and storms, the 0-1. And it missed down low. Lozada hitting a 200 with a home run, seven driven in. They added him shortly after our series in Waldorf during the season's first week. First look at him, the 1-1. And he lines it at third and caught by Trienfell. A BB the other way and right into the pocket of the glove of tonight's starting third baseman, one out. And making his first start at third base this season, Made sure he was awake on the first first play of action. Man, that was hit hard. And playing in, too. Uh, one down, Edwin Garcia will stand in. The Blue Crab shortstop 
And Parch with the pitch. In tight, makes Garcia jump back. That's one of those you squeeze not to keep the ball in the glove, but to keep the glove on your hand. Yeah. <laughs> now that'll wake him up. Rebs are in their football style whites tonight. Southern Maryland in the baby blue jerseys. And the 1 0 to Garcia. It's upstairs. He's hitting a 256. 2 0 count. Parch into his windup, fires, and a cutter over for a strike. 93, but it did have a late run on it. So maybe not the cutter by design, but it did tail. Here's the wind and the 2 1. And a swing and a miss. That fastball explodes through. Blue Crabs typically lead off with Gary Brown, but he was not on their lineup card tonight. Here's the 2 2. And it's lined the other way off the glove of Tejeda on a leap at first. He tumbles to his backside. Robinson over toward the right field line to glove and toss in. And it skips by Franco, but rolls right to Dent, covering at second base. So a base hit for Garcia, and two hard hit liners the other way. One was caught. This one just scraped off the tip of Tejeda's glove, trying to climb the ladder. That'll bring up Corey Vaughn, who, when Parch was closing for the Rebs early in the year, Vaughn hit a homer off of him, and he swings here and nubs a foul, third base side. Broke a tie in a seven-inning game. He hit it in the bottom of the sixth. Parch, about a week later, was making his first start. Does have a save from... Back early in the year, 0-1, and a breaking ball. It's a called strike two. Our play dumb tonight is Jorge Teran, Nate Caldwell at first, Victor Alejandro at third. Vaughn, the son of former all-star Greg Vaughn, hitting 258, three homers, and the 0-2. Breaking ball, look out, fouled to the right of the net and back into the stands. A late defensive swing to foul it off. Vaughn, a good on-base guy, tied for second in the league in walks and tied for third in runs scored. 23 walks, 25 runs. Parch ready. Another 0-2, and a swing and a high pop foul. This will get out of play to the right. Vaughn, who would grow up following his down around the big leagues and around clubhouses and whatnot, but his dad said that he never pushed him to play baseball. Former Mets farmhand, fourth round pick in 2010, pitched to him, swing and a miss, a slider down and away, and Curtis Parch with the strikeout. And he threw some pretty vicious sliders to Vaughn in that at bat. Two down in the inning. And even though his ERA is up at seven, the strikeout numbers this year for Parch have been really good. It's just about leaving balls over the plate. He's been hit a little too hard, the home run ball, more than he would like. But those strikeout numbers have been good, and for him the key is just keeping the ball down in the zone. Here's Michael Snyder. And first pitch is down low. No Zach Wilson in their lineup tonight. They have some potent right-hand hitters, but Wilson on the bench, so Snyder in there without his first base slash DH compadre. They often flip-flop the duties from one night to another. Snyder at first tonight defensively. Pitch to him is swung on and miss. Fastball down and away. That one in 93. Well, if Parch can stay on top of the ball, which is what they're working with him on, we could see it, him really blossom, returning to the starter's role this season. He's shown it in flashes, that's for sure. Now a long set 
just continuing to hold it and time asked for just trying to get Garcia to get antsy and go at some point. He does have four steals. Runner at first with two outs here in the top of the first. Blue Crab's first visit to York. And Parcha move. Garcia dives back. He was starting to sidestep towards second, but hadn't strayed far off the bag. Snyder hitting 271, seven homers. Second in the league in total extra base hits with 20. Tied for second in doubles. Parch delivers. Swing and a miss. Fastball that he keeps down. And ahead now, one and two. It's all Parch and relief on Friday night. It's his first start in 10 days. He fires. And a swing and a miss. A slider down low. Back-to-back -back strikeouts of the three and four hitters in a scoreless top of the first. No runs, one hit, and one left. And we've played a half inning. It's the Blue Crabs nothing, and the Revs coming up. Sports injury? Walk into Wellspan Urgent Orthopedics for immediate care. No appointment is ever needed. Our orthopedic and sports medicine specialists are here to treat you. Visit wellspan.org forward slash urgent orthopedics today for hours at our York and Hanover locations. What's better than a food and beer festival? How about a free food and beef festival on the best lawn in town? Saturday, June 3rd at 11 a.m. It's Brews and Skews presented by York Traditions Bank. Party in the outfield where the York Revolution play and enjoy skewered foods, 16 varieties of craft brews, music, and entertainment for all ages. There's even a cornhole tournament. That's Brews and Skews, the free party at People's Bank Park on Saturday, June 3rd. Get all the details at brewsandskews.com. Are you one of the many people that has a 401k that is eligible to roll over, but you just haven't done it yet? Maybe you're not sure where is the best place to put it. I'm Tom Dasher of Tom Dasher Investment Services. I specialize in helping you get in your 401k and IRA money parked in the best place for you. So if you haven't rolled your 401k yet, or if you're not satisfied with your IRA, call me for a consultation at 487-2096. That's 487-2096. And check out my website at TomDasher.com. All about local sports. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Well, you know what that melodious sound means. <laughs> it's Cannonball Charlie pulls the trigger. Revs are coming to bat. <laughs> Daryl Thompson will make the start for Southern Maryland tonight. The Blue Crabs all-time wins leader. La Plata, Maryland native, is eighth start, three and two with a 3.48 ERA. 44 innings, 42 hits, 11 walks, 32 Ks. Opponents have hit just 249. And it'll be Derek Robinson to lead things off. Robinson on a tear here of late. He's reminded to tuck in his back pocket as he stands in. He's hitting a 288. Had the game tying hit in Sunday's win in the seventh. First pitch tonight is in for a strike from Thompson. Robinson, Franco, Tejeda at the top tonight. And the 0-1. He watches a strike. 87 from Thompson to get ahead. Blue Crabs had a six-game winning streak snapped on Sunday. Lost their last one. The 0-2. And a swing and a miss. And a fastball at 88. And Thompson a strikeout on three pitches to start his night. Lost at New Britain on Sunday afternoon. Southern Maryland just two games out behind Lancaster coming in. Well, now here's Angel Franco. It's NASCAR night. They have him photoshopped in a fire suit. First pitch is just inside. Franco had what 
amounted to the game-winning eighth-inning double or seventh-inning double Sunday. Pitch is on the outside corner, a called strike. Gave the Revs the lead. And they would add an insurance pitch here, swing and a miss, a changeup from Thompson. One ball, two strikes. Thompson now 35 wins in his Blue Crab career. He deals, and it's fouled back out of play. All-time leader in wins and innings, and second in strikeouts behind only Gabby Hernandez, who the Revs will not see in this series. Winds and fires. And a tapper hits softly toward first. Snyder away from the bag, gloves, and feeds to Thompson over there to cover. And there's two down. Strike out and a ground out for Thompson to start his night. It's his 300th career start, his 96th in the Atlantic League. 103rd Atlantic League appearance. It's a two down, and here's Isaiah Tejeda, and with the addition today of Derek Capetillo as another catcher, Luis Cruz, who they really like behind the plate, can play more. And Tejeda can play first, and better chance of keeping him fresh, and might hit even better as he takes a belt-high strike. He comes in tonight at 3.07, tied for ninth, but that's also coupled with the wear and tear of catching. Is the 0-1, and it missed outside, a fastball. But when he was red hot about a week and a half ago now, hit four home runs in five days, that was during the stretch he was playing more first base, and Mason Company have really noticed his hitting is better when he's in the field. 1-1, and it's inside. He kicks the back leg out. Defensively, he's been really impressive at first base, so... They're excited to have that as an option again. Here's the 2-1, and he swings, pops it straight up. The catcher, Luis Allen, his former teammate back halfway toward the screen, and he's got it. A 1-2-3 first inning for Daryl Thompson. And scoreless tonight here early, heading to the second here at People's Bank Park. We were with you when you were struggling with the challenges of being a young athlete, before the challenges of keeping fit while working 9 to 5, and long before Pilates and Zumba were even a thing. Flying feet. Flying Feet Sports News outfitted you as a young athlete. When you slipped into a new sport practically every season, you learned a lot, and you grew strong. Now that you're an adult, why stop? Flying Feet has the brands and the styles that will increase your performance no matter how you choose to maintain your fitness. Just like when you were a kid, when you shop Flying Feet, you know you'll walk away with the best fit and natural comfort. Flying Feet stocks fitness shoes and all kinds of fitness gear. So, what do you do these days? Trail walking? Working out on the track? On the street? In the gym? Sign up for exercise? classes like Pilates, Zumba, or need shoes for weightlifting? It doesn't matter what you're into, you can always count on Flying Feet. It's the one sportswear specialty store that's truly ageless. Flying Feet. Flying Feet Sports Shoes, 1511 Mount Rose Avenue, York, just off exit 18 of I-83. Hey, Revs fans, get points for great rewards just by supporting your team through the new Revolution Rewards Program. Use the new York Revolution app to receive and earn points for ballpark food, store discounts, stadium tours, and more. Available through the Apple and Google Play stores, the York Revolution app also features team news and exclusive content, contests and promotions for Revolution prizes, online ticket purchases, live game streaming, and more. Download the York Revolution app today. Free stuff by supporting your team? That's Revs time. For local sports on your smartphone, search WOIK at the App Store. Next score as we head to the second tonight. Devon Rodriguez leading off for Southern Maryland. He's been hot. The five, six, and seven in their order. Rodriguez in 16 games played, hitting 362. 14 ribbies in 16 games, one home run. The 
Left-hand hitter digs in. Here's Parch's first pitch of the inning. He swings and pops it up. And at third, Trian fell across into foul ground, back on the warning track, and he squeezes it. A few steps shy of the Blue Crab bullpen bench. And it's a one pitch out to begin the second inning. Parch had thrown 17 pitches in the first. And here is Zach Cohn. He's hitting 277 with a home run, 12 driven in. Parch has gone 10 days between each of his last two starts. First pitch is up high, bouncing out of Cruz's mitt. Fastball at 93 again, which is where he sits. As a starter, his ERA is in the low sixes. As the wind, he fires, and it's dribbled foul behind the plate. His last start was at Sugar Land, and he kind of labored four and a third, six runs, five earned. He had four walks. The two starts before that, five innings in each, both against Long Island. Three earned runs and two earned runs. He deals, and it's pulled foul, a soft liner into the front row. Down the third base side, one and two. No score here in the top of the second. Cone, a former first rounder of the Rangers, 37th overall in 2011. Out of the University of Georgia, Georgia native. Pitch is a fastball away. That one ramped up to 94. Cohn had some injuries, made it as high as double A. Pitch is swung on and missed. He chases in the dirt. He's saying that he tipped it foul, but the plate ump says, no, you didn't. And Cruz blocks it and tags him out. Parch with his third strikeout here in the first two innings. The two away, and here now the return of Luis Allen. He played in 11 games with York, nine with Southern Maryland now. Overall hitting at 258, 296 with the Blue Crabs. Parch's first pitch, he swings and pops a foul, headed back and out of play. So up there looking to jump on the first one against his former team. And I'm sure in York he wanted to play more, and Mace pulled the trigger on a deal for a player to be named later to give him a chance to play a lot more there. The 0-1, and a fastball down and in misses. Rebs will be owed some players. It's the 1-1. One, one. And a breaking ball low. Allen does have one home run with Southern Maryland. And four of his eight driven in with the Blue Crabs. The 2-1. Fast ball up. And Parch. Looking loose tonight. He, another one at 94. Already, here's the 3 1. And it missed low. So Allen is on. First walk of the night from Parch. And a two out base runner. And that'll bring up Patrick Palmero. Son of Raph. He's hitting at 220, five home runs, 21 driven in. He'd been here the last two years as a member of the Skeeters. He just left and are now at Long Island. First pitch is lined to third, right to Trienfell again. And he stands right there, reaches up above cap high, and collects another one. Another line out to third, and another scoreless inning for Curtis Parch. No runs, hits airs, one man left. We go to the bottom of the second inning, no score. 
Money and business are essential to the strength of a community. So is cheering and celebration and music and fun. That's why York Revolution games, concerts, youth sports, special events, and more happen at a place called People's Bank Park. People's Bank has been serving York County for more than 150 years. Always cheering, always celebrating, always committed to the things that make York County great. And to you having a great time at People's Bank Park. People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Sports Radio 1350 is your home for local and national sports. The Big Sports Talker also has you covered with news throughout the day. Catch statewide updates on news and sports from Radio PA. Stock reports with your money now, mornings and afternoons. And national news updates every hour from Westwood One. Stay up to date while getting your sports fix all day. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. Hear that? It's the sound of summer. Sound nice? Call Kona Ice. We do it all. Schools, sporting events, parties, both corporate and birthday. You name it, we'll be there. We bring the party to you. If you need a little bit of fun in your life, we're the shaved ice truck for you. Oh, and we fundraise too. This summer, cool down with Kona Ice. Give us a call at 1-800-KONA-ICE or visit us online at www.kona-ice.com. Kona Ice. Flavor our world. Your teams all the time. Sports only place for local sports. Sports Radio 1350 WOIK. No score. Middle third of the order for the Revs. Here in the home half of the second. Michael Burgess to lead off. One, two, three, first from Daryl Thompson. Burgess the start in left tonight. We've seen him in right a couple of times this year. A lot of outfield last year. First pitch of the inning, he swings and fouls it straight back over the roof. Burgess at 274, five homers, 18 driven in. And some asked, well, with Tejeda going to first, where does Burgess play? Well, tonight he's in left. Here's the 0-1, and he fouls it back off the netting. The Revs still do have some versatility, and Derek Capetillo, I don't know when he'll play in his first game, but he's already making an impact by being here. Here's the 0-2. And that misses up high. Catcher signed today. Played four years in the red system. I think I said 24-year-old. He's actually 22. That's the pitch. And a swing and a foul tip squeezed. Now Burgess down on strikes. And Thompson's retired his first four of the night. We'll pause for station identification. First in York. First in sports. Your only local sports station. The new Sports Radio 1350. WOYK, York, Pennsylvania. One away. Here is Joel Guzman. DHing the night. Hitting at 230. Three homers, 13 driven in. First pitch is lined to left. Base hit. Revs have their first base runner of the night. And he jumps on the first one that he sees. Has picked it up a bit. He had a homer and a double in the last two games, respectively, and a single tonight. The first pitch, jumping on it, and a one-out base runner for Travis Witherspoon. Hitting 284. And first offering, it's a fastball strike, outside corner. Witherspoon, who ignited the seventh inning rally with the single off the left field wall Sunday, then drove in the insurance run. After scoring the tying run, 0 1. And it's over at the knees, a cutter for strike two. Witherspoon now hitting 425 with nine RBIs his last 10 games. 
His average has gone up from 203 to 284. 0-2. And it misses high, a change up. No score here in the bottom of the second tonight. Overcast evening. There had been the threat of some showers or storms in the area. Thompson ready. And the one, two, swing, and he taps a foul that bounced up off himself. And Witherspoon hangs in there. Our Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care home run contest tonight. Katie Rakes is our contestant. Hopefully, the Revs are able to rake for you, Katie. Good luck. <laughs> Another one, two, and a swing and a pop up at third base. Palmero in a couple of steps under awaiting. And he will put it away, the one hand grab, two down. All right, well span sports medicine injury report. The Revs could get Alonzo Harris back at least active as soon as tomorrow. I don't know if Mace would play him the first day back, but he really looked good today pregame. Here's Ryan Dent and the day off Sunday, so back-to-back -back days off. He's hitting 262. And tonight starting at short, hitting seventh. They keep Franco in the two hole tonight. And Thompson the stretch. First offering is over the outer half, a called strike. And that day off was not for lack of production by any means. It was just to get him a day. He had played the most games out of anyone in the field. Burgess had one more, but he has DH'd several times. 0-1, and he fouls it back off the net. Uh, an impressive thing about Dent, he's played all four infield positions, sometimes in the course of four games. So playing every day, moving around to different spots. Here's the 0-2, and a fastball missed wide. On the 1-2, and he swings, fouls it back. Thompson took a little off, but Dent stays on it. Thompson, an eighth round pick of the Expos in 2003 out of La Plata High School. Was dealt to the Red system. Made his big league debut with Cincinnati. Pitch, breaking ball down and away, two and two. Debuted at Yankee Stadium in June of 08. Total of four big league games with the Reds. Thirty-one year old ready. Two two. And a called third strike. He paints a fastball down the way. And gets the call to end the inning. His third strikeout three two. No runs, one hit, and one left. We'll go to the third tonight. No score. Take it from me, guys. You want to make life happier? Your wife wants a nicer lawn. The kind of lawn you see on Home and Gardens and Martha Stewart. Here's a hint. You're not alone. Call your pals at Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care. They've got a way with lush lawns that the ladies like. And as you know, happy wifey, happy hubby, winky face. Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care. World-class care right in your backyard. 717-292-9994. Come on! Colin Cowherd. <laughs> Raymond Green, in my opinion, will not end his career as a warrior. He will wear people out. When you're winning, the egos are fine. But if OKC knocks him out, how hard is Draymond Green to deal with them? They had guys that talked a lot and had egos. Notice how they started wearing each other out? 
when a few losses piled up. This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. Two days at three on Sports Radio 1350 WOIK. Can you sit up, little guy? Ah. There you go. What a big boy. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Every time he grabs my maple donut, it pulls him over to one side. But he keeps on grabbing at it. Ah. Whoop, there he goes again. <laughs> Wait, let's see how this works. Here you go, little dude. Here's another maple donut. Can you grab it? Well, there you have it, folks. Charlie's right. A balanced baby needs a maple donut in each hand. Maple donuts taste right. York Sports on your mobile device or online at woyk1350.com. Head of the third, no score. Nine, one, and two due up for the Blue Crabs. The uh, K man tonight is the man they call KK. Kalaika Kahua Hala Hala. DHing Hawaii native. First pitch is a check swing slider for a strike. He's one for nine in five games played and two starts. An infielder, but DHing tonight. And the 0-1, swing and he grounds it fair down the third baseline. That'll roll to the left field corner, and Burgess looking to retrieve it as it rattles in the corner. He stands at second with a leadoff double. So KK, they call him who had driven in his only run against the Revs back in late April on his only hit. And it now has his second hit, a double right down the line at third. So that's how the third inning begins. And we go to the top of the order in Jose Lozada, who lined out to third his first at bat. And he'll try to move the leadoff man along Pitch from Parch, he swings and will do just that. Pulls a grounder to second, Franco to his left to cut it off. And a short toss off to first. KK goes to third with one away. And Southern Maryland looking for the initial lead. You're just gonna stay away from that last name, aren't you? Uh-huh. Still a little traumatized by what happened to me in Waldorf. Well, he's listed as KK on the lineup card. <laughs> yeah. John Harris trying to help out every broadcaster. It's Edwin Garcia who goes around a slider and a half swing. Cruz blots it. Well, I guess if it's on the lineup card, then it's OKK. Oh, man. It's more where this came from. Here all night. Stretch and the 0 1. That's another slider in the dirt. Appeal to first. No swing this time. They got Garcia to offer the first time. They tried it again. One ball, one strike. Single to right his first time up. A liner at first to Hayda tried to leap and rob him. Hit off his glove. He's the 1 1. And he taps it softly, but foul over on the third base side. 1 and 2. Garcia's entire previous career in the Rangers system. He and Zach Cohn were in the Rangers chain together. Pitch. And it's down and away, a slider. And with two strikes, the Revs brought the infield halfway up. Figuring Garcia might get a little more defensive with his swing. Two and two. Venezuela native. It's been a triple-A round rock the last two years. The stomping grounds of one Josh Wilson. Pitch. And a missed down and in, a slider. Count goes full. Corey Vaughn awaiting on deck.
Bart's ready. And the payoff pitch. Swing and a ground ball rolling up the middle. It hits the second base bag. Ricochets into left. A run scores and it's 1-0. And it was through the drawn in infield regardless. And then it hit the corner of the bag and careened into left. It'll be an RBI single for Garcia. He's two for two. And the Blue Crabs have struck first. Garcia, a one-out base runner as Corey Vaughn comes to the plate. Lead-off double, and they quickly turn it into a run. And parch the pitch, swinging a bouncer foul. Down to John Harris, their manager coaching at third. Blue Crabs team offense, fifth in batting, tied for fourth in runs. Tied for third with 33 homers, fourth in steals. So they're middle or top half in everything, all the major ones. The pitch, swing and a miss. Parch has thrown some of his best sliders of the night to Vaughn, who he struck out on that in the first inning. Really good arm action there by Curtis Parch. Looks like a fastball coming out of his hand and then just drifts away. Now the 0-2. And a cold third strike. Back with the heater on the outside corner. 92 and Vaughn frozen. It is the fourth strikeout of the night for Parch. Who coming into this one had better than a strikeout per inning. Two down here in the top of the third. Second time that he's gotten Vaughn by way of the punch out. Here's Michael Snyder who he struck out in the first. First pitch is a broken bat grounder cut off at third by Treenfell. He'll throw to second and the inning is over. Right off the end of the bat, a one hopper to third. One run on two hits and one left. And we'll go to the bottom half of the third. Revs trailing early, it's one nothing. Having the gang over to watch the game? Keep them happy with great Best Jet products from your neighborhood SureSave markets. Football fans, hockey fans, basketball fans, everyone's a fan of game day party planners with 1893 deli items. Best Jet hot dogs go great with Best Jet kettle cooked chips. Or serve up a couple Best Jet rising crust pizzas with 12 packs of Best Jet soda. Throw the best game day party ever with Best Jet products. Shop Sobel's Markets in Shrewsbury, Stewartstown, Whiteford and East York, Wetzel's in Glenrock, and Nell's Market Fresh Foods in Spry. The mission of Big Brothers Big Sisters of York and Adams Counties is to provide children facing adversity with strong and enduring, professionally supported, one-to-one -one relationships that change their lives for the better, forever. It is proven that Big Brothers Big Sisters mentoring programs have a direct impact on children achieving higher aspirations, greater confidence, better relationships, and educational success, and avoiding risky behavior. Please visit afewhours.org for more information on becoming a mentor. It is time well spent. Enter Rutter's Summer of Freedom Sweepstakes today. Look for the entry star. Purchase participating products. Scan your Rutter's Rewards card or enter VIP information at checkout and automatically be entered to win your choice of a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport, Ram 1500 Bighorn Quad Cab, or Dodge Challenger RT from Stetler. Drive better, drive Stetler. Free gas for a year and one of thousands of prizes, including Red Bull, Pepsi, and Pennsylvania Lottery scratch-off tickets. Must be a Rutter's VIP to enter. Rutter's, why go anywhere? Else. First in York, first in sports. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. It is a 1 0 Southern Maryland lead. We go to the bottom half of the third. And Luis Cruz will lead things off. Cruz, Trienfell, and Robinson do up. Matt says he can feel the storm in his sinuses, so I hope that's not a, a telltale sign. Thanks for sharing. Is that what you go by, the weatherman? First pitch of the inning, and a swing and a foul back upstairs. It's just in the area. Looking at the radar, it actually looks like it's going to split us with one part staying in Maryland just south of the line and the other part heading up towards Harrisburg. Thompson... 
with the 0-1. And it's just outside. Cruz in his fourth game played tonight with York two for nine at the plate. Thompson the 1-1 one, one, and a swing and a miss went off speed. The Revs really like what Cruz brings behind the plate and at the plate for that matter. And we'll see a lot more of him. Thompson kicks, delivers, and a swing and a high fly toward the line and right. A long run for Zach Cohn. And that'll land, I think, up on the bullpen balcony, right near the railing. And Cruz stays alive, one and two. Thompson to the plate. And it missed in tight, down near the knees, two and two. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Now a slider gets Cruz, that is the fourth strikeout for Thompson, each starter with four. Thompson had some Atlantic League ties before he knew it. He was an eighth round pick of the Expos, and then when they were the Nationals a few years later, July of 06, part of a big trade. He was traded to the Reds. It was Carlos Trienfell. And first pitch is fouled back to the net. Austin Kearns, Felipe Lopez, who was nearly a Rev at one point, and Ryan Wagner came back to Washington. Going with Thompson to Cincinnati was Bill Bray. Here's a swing and a miss off speed. It's 0-2. Royce Clayton, future Sugarland closer Gary Majeski, and future Long Island third baseman Brendan Harris. Thompson shakes off. And the 0-2 swing and a pop foul out of play right side. Harris preceded Cody Puckett at third base for the Ducks, and Puckett just went down the other day, had a knee surgery that they tweeted out. He had played in the game the previous day and then had surgery, so it couldn't have been anything. It was the pitch and a swing and a miss off speed. So Thompson now five strikeouts couple of sliders for K's here in the third, but it couldn't have been like a ACL or anything like that to have surgery the next day, I wouldn't think. But. I don't know. I've actually heard that ACL tears are more painful after the surgery than when they happen. But he had the surgery and had played just the previous day, so I don't think it would have been that. Whatever the case, he's down until next year. Here's Derek Robinson who takes high. Robinson, a strikeout his first time up. Want to say hi to Trey Himes, who's listening. It's the 1-0, and a fastball in for a strike. 1-0 Blue Crabs lead here in the home half of the third. Thompson to the plate, and that missed down low, a slider. Two one, and a swing and a foul back out of play. Thompson first came to Southern Maryland in 2012. He had been in the big leagues for one outing just the previous year with Cincinnati. Three starts in the majors in 08. And he fires and a swing and a foul tip squeezed. And Thompson strikes out the side in the third. It's his sixth. Strikeout, and he's dealing here early. Four in a row on strikeouts. And we go to the fourth here tonight. Matt Present with the play-by-play. -play. The Revs trailing one nothing.
At Donegal, we understand there are many costs associated with running a business. That's why Donegal works with you to provide quality insurance products based on your business needs and why we deliver that insurance at a price to fit your budget. Call your local independent Donegal agent today and discover why, when it comes to insurance for your business, Donegal is a better value. Contact Coatman Kunkel Insurance at 717-854-0300 or stop in at 3217 East Market Street, York. Locally owned and operated by Pam and Rudy Coatman. Coatman Kunkel. Insurance. Hey Revs fans, now's your chance to win big with the Revs and Shipley Energy. This season, during every home game at People's Bank Park, it's the all-new Shipley Energy Grand Slam inning. Each game, one inning will be designated, and one name will be selected as the contestant. If the Revs hit a Grand Slam that inning, you could win $5,000. To enter, stop by Fan Services and fill out your form, or enter via the York Revolution app or YorkRevolution.com. Sign up today and win big with the Revs and and Shipley Energy this season. What's more exhilarating than playing $100,000 club with top prizes of $100,000? Winning on the spot. Yeah! <laughs> so if you can't wait to win, then don't wait to play $100,000 club. The new scratch-off from the Pennsylvania Lottery for a chance to win up to $100,000 on the spot. The Pennsylvania Lottery. Keep on scratching. Players must be 18 or older. Please play responsibly. Benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. Your county, your teams. Sports Radio 1550 WOIK. First in York, first in sports. To the fourth we go, one nothing Southern Maryland. Curtis Parch fires, and it's an off-speed delivery right there, strike one. Rodriguez, the left fielder, stands in. Cone and Allen to follow here. Parch working quickly, and another breaking ball. This time it stays outside, one and one to count. Four strikeouts through the first three for Curtis Parch. Did allow a run last inning on a couple of hits. And the 1-1 pitch on the way, got in on the fist, jammed him, popped it up third base side. Tree and Phil skips over the bag and catches it just one step into foul ground for out number one. A little bit of an acrobatic play there. Good awareness to know where the bag was. Never looked down, but had the sense to skip his feet just over top of third and makes the catch in foul ground, one up, one down. So here's Zach Cohn, the right fielder. Parch into his line, comes home to Cohn. Fastball, check swing, it's upstairs. Appeal to first, and no swing, says Nate Caldwell. Very cloudy night here at People's Bank Park. Lights on from the start. And the 1-0 on the way. Slider stays inside. 2-0 the count. Storms are in the area, but according to the radar, it looks like they're just going to split and go right around the stadium. The 2-0 pitch on the way, swing and a miss. 93 up around the letters, and Cone came up empty. Cone a 277 average, one home run, 12 driven in. The 2-1 on the way from Parch. Fastball popped up, foul and out of play. The count now even at 2-2. Two Cone, a third round draft pick by the Angels back in 2008. Did not sign and then went in the first round to the Texas Rangers in 2011. Pitch on the way, fastball misses high. Count now full, three and two. So he decided to go to Georgia, that's where he played his college ball and Increased his draft stock by two rounds. The payoff pitch from Parch. Line drive towards the gap in right center field. It's now tailing all the way to Robinson in right. And he waits for it to come down and puts it away for out number two. So two up and two down. Four straight retired by Curtis Parch. And that brings up a familiar face in Luis Allen. Allen walked his first at bat, and that's what the Revs were so high on him 
before when he was here, his patience at the plate, the fact that he's a contact hitter, first pitch on the way, fastball down and away, ball one. Coming over from the American Association, he had nine seasons in which he walked more times than he struck out. The 1-0 pitch to Allen, fastball down and away again, 91 this time on the gun, it's 2-0. Arch has been sitting 91 to 93 all night. Wearing 45 today, he switched his jersey number. It was 39 for the per first part of the year. The 2-0 to Luis Allen. Fastball hit on the ground, hard to short. Dent back to play his hop. Sets and throws from deep in the hole and all the way across to Tejeda. First, a three up, three down inning for Curtis Parch. We head to the home half of the fir uh, fourth, excuse me, one nothing in Southern Maryland on 1350 WOYK. Enter Rudder's Summer of Freedom Sweepstakes today. Look for the entry star, purchase participating products, scan your Rudder's rewards card, or enter VIP information at checkout, and automatically be entered to win your choice of a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport, Ram 1500 Bighorn Quad Cab, or Dodge Challenger RT from Stetler. Drive better, drive Stetler. Free gas for a year and one of thousands of prizes, including Red Bull, Pepsi, and Pennsylvania Lottery scratch-off tickets. Must be a Rudder's VIP to enter. Rudder's, why go anywhere? Else. Need material handling equipment for your company's busy season? Mid-Atlantic Industrial Equipment offers a full line of rental equipment to keep you operating at maximum efficiency. Forklifts from 3,000 to 15,000 pound capacity, narrow aisle reach trucks and order pickers, electric pallet jacks, scissor lifts, and forklift clamp attachments. Daily, weekly, and monthly terms available. Call today at 888-383-LIFT. That's 888-383-5438. And check us out online at midatlanticindustrial.com. The mission of Big Brothers Big Sisters of York and Adams Counties is to provide children facing adversity with strong and enduring, professionally supported, one-to-one -one relationships that change their lives for the better forever. It is proven that Big Brothers Big Sisters mentoring programs have a direct impact on children achieving higher aspirations, greater confidence, better relationships, and educational success, and avoiding risk behavior. Please visit a fewhours.org for more information on becoming a mentor. It is time well spent. Follow York Sports on your Android. Search Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. One nothing Blue Crabs on top here. Bottom of the fourth. It'll be Angel Franco, Isaias Tejeda, Michael Burgess for the Revs. Two, three, and four in their order. The Revs going with their two switch hitters at the top of the lineup against the righty Daryl Thompson. Burgess, the other lefty bat, and he'll bat this inning as well. Franco 0 for 1, a ground out to first base, and the first pitch on the way from Thompson, a fastball called strike on the outside edge. Thompson's go-to pitch is in fact his sinker, and the pitch on the way. Sky fouling out of play on right side. Also a change-up fastball and curveball for the right-hander. 6 4 two fifteen. Excuse me, six feet, 185 for Thompson. And the pitch on the way to Franco, 0 and 2. He fights it foul. Back and out of play, left side. The height and weight of the player I accidentally read is Zach Thornton, just signed by the Blue Crabs. And the 0-2 pitch on the way, hit on the ground to second base. Up with it is Lozada, and on to first for out number one. So six in a row now retired by Thompson. Ever since the Joel Guzman single to left in the second. And you have to wonder if his success early on has anything to do with the fact that his catcher, Luis Allen, knows the Revs very well. Spent his first just shy of a month of the season here, departing on May 19th for Southern Maryland. 
as Tejeda digs in. And the first pitch to the Revs catcher. Rolled over and hit on the ground to third. A tough play by for Palmero. He charges, fires to first, and gets Tejeda by half a step. Two up and two down here in the fourth. Good play by Palmero. Gloved it, charging, made the transfer and throw. A smooth delivery across the diamond. So here's Michael Burgess. Burgess batting 274. Five homers, 18 runs driven in. Pitch on the way. Sinker down low, ball one. one nothing Blue Crabs here, home half of the fourth. Two outs, nobody on. Thompson winds and fires, and Burgess takes it in the dirt. Ball two. Burgess, a strikeout victim back in the second. One of six on the evening for Daryl Thompson. He's once again making his 300th career start here tonight. The 2-0 pitch to Burgess, swing and a miss. A big cut and he comes up empty. A little bit ahead of that one. It's two and one. Infield and outfield both playing Burgess to pull. Thompson, the line and slips, falls, delivers home and that'll just be a ball. No one on base, so no balk. But he stumbles to the ground now having a good laugh at himself. Always better when you can self-deprecate after something like that happens. Must say he looks a bit bamboozled. Three and one now the count to Michael Burgess. Two down. Thompson ready to go. And the pitch on the way. Line drive towards center field. Sinking and a diving play by Barr. Did he hang on? He did. What a play by the center fielder, Corey Vaughn. It's usually Gary Brown out there. Corey Vaughn getting the start tonight. And he takes a base hit away by, uh, from Michael Burgess. That one hit hard, but it's a three up, three down inning. And eight in a row set down by Daryl Thompson. We head to the fifth. It's one nothing Southern Maryland on 1350 WOIK. Did you know that Shipley Energy can take care of all your energy needs? from heating oil and propane to providing your home with electricity and natural gas. We also provide heating and air conditioning service and installation. All of your energy needs are under one roof at Shipley Energy. To learn more, visit ShipleyEnergy.com. Call 855-4-SHIPLEY and don't forget to ask about our $100 rebate. Shipley Energy, energy for life. What's better than a food and beer festival? How about a free food and beef festival on the best lawn in town? Saturday, June 3rd at 11 a.m., it's Brews and Skews, presented by York Traditions Bank. Party in the outfield with the York Revolution play and enjoy skewered foods, 16 varieties of craft brews, music, and entertainment for all ages. There's even a cornhole tournament. That's Brews and Skews, the free party at People's Bank Park on Saturday, June 3rd. Get all the details at brewsandskews.com. Dream big for less with a first mortgage or home equity loan from First Capital Federal Credit Union. Our competitive rates and terms make it so easy to purchase a new home or refinance your existing home. Either way, we've got you covered. Plus, our home equity loans with rates as low as 3.99% APR for 120 months give you the spending power you need for remodeling, education, you name it. For more information, visit us online at firstcapitalfcu.com. First Capital, putting you first. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing lender. First Capital. There's only one place for local high school sports. Sports Radio 1350. 1-0 Southern Maryland leads it here. Top of the fifth. One run on three hits for the Blue Crabs. No runs on one hit for the Revolution. Patrick Palmero. Kaleka Kahulala, and then Jose Lozada here. And the first pitch from Porch, fastball down and away. 
Palmero lined out to third base sharply his first time up. Hooked a fastball on the outside corner and pulled it right into the glove of Trienfell. And the pitch on the way bounces in. The count now two balls and no strikes. Palmero in his sixth professional season and third in the Atlantic League. Played the last two years in Sugar Land. And the 2-0 pitch from Parch. Hit in the air, right center field, tailing towards right again. Robinson has a beat on it. Comes over a few steps towards the gap and puts it away for out number one. So we mentioned Thompson has set down eight consecutively. Parch now with six straight retired. And here comes Kahulala. A double and a run scored the lone run of the ball game and the pitch on the way fisted foul straight back to the screen. High socks as he stands in. Third base side batter's box and the 0-1 from Parch. Slider just missed the inside edge. Cruz I think thought he had gotten the call. He kind of pump faked the throw back to Parch initially. And the pitch on the way, hit hard on the ground, third base side, and just under the glove of Trienfell, and into left field. Kahulala, two-hit game, a double, and now a single. And he will turn the lineup over here as Lozada will come to the plate in the fifth. Odell avoids the last name completely. I'm going to try to say it as much as possible. from Manu Nakoa. That's where he played back in Hawaii. His birthplace is Kahuliu. Here's Lozada, the second baseman. Pitch on the way. Hit on the ground to second base. Franco to the backhand. The glove flip to dip. The return for the first double play. Four, six, three. Some nifty work up the middle. And the Revs go three up and three down erasing the base hit by Kahulala. We head to the bottom of the fifth. It's one nothing Southern Maryland on 1350 W-O-Y-K. Hey, it's the good looking genius at Broadway Transmission. You know what really grinds my gears? Perfectly good cars being thrown away just because the transmission went bad. My mind slips into overdrive when someone says, I'll just get a new car before I spend that kind of money on a transmission. What? According to Kelly Blue Book, the average price of a new car is 32 grand. Now you're gonna finance that, right? There's another six to eight grand. And if you drive it off the showroom floor, it loses 20% of its value immediately. Don't forget, you also have to pay sales tax, hire insurance rates, title and registration fees, and come up with six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month depending on your interest rates for five years. And remember, you will still have to pay for the upkeep of the car. Brakes, tires, wipers, fluids, etc. Stop! Trade your transmission, not your car. Thanks, good looking genius. You're welcome, ma'am. Broadway Transmission. We'll get your ship together and save you all that dough. Visit us on the web at broadwaytrans.com or stop in and see how it's done. This is the Dan Patrick Show. I just like to say that y'all rock, man. Everybody benefits off Steph Curry. Really incredible. Now, Draymond Green, you know I love, and he's probably the MVP of the team. But without Steph Curry, Draymond Green is not this kind of player. Good player, but not this kind of player. Clay Thompson, he would be a very good shooter for another team. But the style and having Steph Curry changes everything. Dan Patrick. Mornings at 9 on Sports Radio 1350 WOIK. Hi, this is Dan Patrick. Join me weekday mornings at 9 on Sports Radio 1350 WOIK. What a glove flip there by Angel Franco starting the 4-6-3 double play. It's 1-0 Southern Maryland. Guzman leads it off for the Revs and takes a fastball on the inner half for strike one. But awesome defense there on the other side of things. Thompson winds and fires and Guzman hits it well. High in the air and deep to left field. 
turning and looking is Rodriguez. That one is gone. Fourth of the year for Joel Guzman, and we are tied at one. A no doubt bomb to straight away left field. And for Guzman, his second homer of the homestand. His second hit of the ball game, he's hit safely in four straight, and you get the sense he is settling in. The pitch to Witherspoon, a fastball off the plate away, ball one. The 1-0 on the way, up and away, ball two. Witherspoon, another guy who's been just scorching hot of late. Hitting 474 over his last five, and the pitch on the way is fouled straight back. And over his last 10 games, Witherspoon is hitting 425. 17 hits in 40 at bats. Nine runs driven in. The 2 1 from Thompson. That one stays just inside. Tried to get the slider to come back over the inner part of the plate and did not get the call. Hitters count three and one to Witherspoon. The pitch from Thompson. Hit hard on the ground to third and it's off the glove of Palmero into left field. He tried to overlay it, came up empty and that'll be a base hit on a hard hit ball by Travis Witherspoon. Back to back hits to start off the frame. So that brings up Ryan Dent. Tough play for Palmero, but he didn't do a good job moving his body. Tried to play it off to the side. Witherspoon on it first. And the first pitch to Dent, he drops out a bunt straight back to the mound. To his knee goes Thompson, and he throws the first for out number one. Up to second on the play is Witherspoon. A successful sacrifice from Ryan Dent. Seeing a little what the Rebs can do offensively in this inning. They hit the big bomb and play a little small ball as well. Thompson went to a knee to play that bunt and cost him any chance at second, but good sacrifice for Dent. So here's Luis Cruz with a chance to bring a run home. We're tied at one here in the bottom of the fifth and the first pitch to Cruz, a breaking ball over for strike one. Cruz, two hits in nine at-bats this season. And a spin and a throw to second base, close play, and Witherspoon just got the hand back in. Lozada, the second baseman, snuck in, and Thompson wheeled and threw, and it was a good throw. Low into the shortstop side of the bag. Owen won the count. Thompson checks. A big lead for Witherspoon and the pitch on the way. An off-speed delivery stays upstairs. It's two and one. Check that. One and one the count to the Revs catcher. Time called, Thompson taking a little too long. Thompson has gone five or more innings in every start this season. Very reliable for the Southern Maryland squad. The one one pitch on the way and that's just low. And now it's a two and one count. His last outing against Lancaster, he picked up the win, went eight strong innings, gave up six hits and no runs, walked one and struck out six. Already up to six strikeouts tonight. In fact, he had that through three innings. 
The 2-1 to Cruz. Check swing, roller up to first base. Picking it up is Snyder on a couple of hops, and he'll take it to the bag unassisted for out number two. Witherspoon up to third base on the play, so he's 90 feet away, but now with two men down. Maybe the most frustrating feeling for a hitter, you check your swing and end up putting it in play. But Cruz's at-bats have come sparingly until at this point in time where he's going to get more playing time. and He'll get more comfortable in there with what he's seeing. So now it's Trienfeld to bat. Going with the high socks tonight and playing third for the first time. Two down, 1-1 one, one our score in the first pitch. Cue to foul. Trienfeld out in front on the 77 mile an hour slider from Daryl Thompson. Joel Guzman tying things at one. A home run to lead off the fifth inning. The Blue Crabs getting a run back in the third. Thompson from the stretch. On the 0-1 to Trienfeld. Popped up, shallow right field. Going out is Lozada. Snyder as well. Lozada, the second baseman, onto the grass calls and makes the one-hand grab to retire the side. But the Revs tied at one on two hits. A Joel Guzman home run onto Arch Street does the damage. And as we head to the sixth, it's 1-1 on 1350 WOYK. Enter Rutgers Summer of Freedom Sweepstakes today. Look for the entry starter. Purchase participating products. Scan your Rutgers Rewards card or enter VIP information at checkout and automatically be entered to win your choice of a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport, Ram 1500 Bighorn Quad Cab, or Dodge Challenger RT from Stetler. Drive better, drive Stetler. Free gas for a year and one of thousands of prizes, including Red Bull, Pepsi, and Pennsylvania Lottery scratch-off tickets. Must be a Rutgers VIP to enter. Rutgers, why go anywhere? Else. Facing a legal issue can be a frightening time. What's my course of action? How do I know who to call? Fortunately, the York County Bar Association makes it easy. Now, you only need to make one call to find the right lawyer for you. Call the York County Bar Association and let us help you find the right lawyer with our Attorney Connection Lawyer Referral Service. Just call 854-8755 or visit yorkbar.com. Don't hesitate in getting the help you need. Contact the York County Bar Association and let us help you find the right attorney at the right time. The mission of Big Brothers Big Sisters of York and Adams Counties is to provide children facing adversity with strong and enduring, professionally supported, one-to-one -one relationships that change their lives for the better forever. It is proven that Big Brothers Big Sisters mentoring programs have a direct impact on children achieving higher aspirations, greater confidence, better relationships, and educational success, and avoiding risky behavior. Please visit a few hours.org for more information on becoming a mentor. It is time well spent. All about local sports. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Tied at one thanks to a Joel Guzman solo shot. Edwin Garcia, Corey Vaughn, Michael Snyder, 2-3 and 4 due up for the Blue Crabs. Tejeda in a step at first base. Everyone else is back on the infield. As Garcia stands in, Arch winds and fires a first pitch slider in there for strike one. Witherspoon playing Garcia the opposite way out there in center. Arch gets his sign from Cruz. And now he'll step away. Garcia in his ninth professional season, all nine, or all eighth prior to this year in Texas. And the 0-1 pitch on the way, a fastball misses low. Made it as high as AAA in the Rangers organization last year, splitting time between Round Rock and Frisco. And the 1-1 pitch on the way. Hit on the ground to second base, up with it Franco. He hardly had to move and on to first for out number one. So Franco, his last time in the field with a flashy flip on the double play. This time, a very routine ground ball out to second base, hugging the dirt. And that'll bring up Corey Vaughn. 
Vaughn a couple of strikeouts in two at bats, one swinging and one looking. And the first pitch from Parch, a fastball for a strike. Vaughn gets on base a lot, scores a lot of runs. Second in the league in walks with 23. Pitch on the way, and a breaking ball stays low. And he's also third in runs scored with 25. The 1-1 pitch from Parch, and that one just missed down and in. Looked like a change up there, and it's 2-1. and one. Parch holds his glove in front of his face as he gets his sign, delivers, and this one's bounced right back up the middle, off the mound, and on into center field. A one-out single for Corey Vaughn. Fifth hit of the game for the Blue Crabs. Or rather, fourth. They ruled that Kahualala ball on the left side under the glove of Schrienfeld to be an error. Carlos not getting the glove all the way down on that one. So fourth hit here in inning number six. Here's Michael Snyder playing first base tonight. Parch now works from the stretch. And the pitch on the way, fastball, little down and in, ball one. Again, a couple of the bigger names in this Blue Crab roster not in the lineup here today. Zach Wilson, Gary Brown both getting the night off. And the ball one delivery on the way, misses outside with the fastball. 2-0 the counts. Snyder comes in third in the league in doubles with 13. A strikeout and a fielder's choice in two at-bats. And the pitch on the way, and that's down and away, ball three. Michael Click now up and throwing in the Revs' right field bullpen. Five innings is the longest Parch had gone this year until this outing here. He's now at five and a third in the pitch on the way. Fastball for a strike, 92, he still has it. The count now three and one. He's thrown as many as 92 pitches. He's done that twice. But right now looking for his first win of the year. A 3-1 to Snyder. Fastball hit hard to center field, tailing away from Witherspoon, but he'll have a play. And he reaches up to glove it for out number two. Two down, 1-1 one, one our score here, top of the sixth. Corey Vaughn, a one-out single, stands at first base, and here's Devin Rodriguez. Rodriguez has popped up to Trienfell at third both times. And both times he has done so in foul territory. He digs in from the left side. And when we were down in Southern Maryland to begin the year, his parch is ready and comes home. The fastball misses outside, ball one. The Blue Crabs did not have a single lefty bat in their lineup. But now they have Lozada, a switch hitter, and Rodriguez, a lefty-only hitter in their order. The 1-0 pitch on the way, fouled straight back to the screen. It's now one ball and one strike. So a couple additions in the versatility department, if nothing else. Rodriguez playing left field this evening. Listed as a utility player on the Blue Crabs website. 1-1, one, one, runner goes, a great jump, and the pitch swung and a miss, throw to second, well late, and Vaughn in there standing. Well, he got a great jump off of Curtis Parch, but Parch does deliver a strike on the swing and a miss, and now it's one and two. Base runners now four for five this year against Curtis. 
And the pitch on the way, upcoming to Rodriguez. Here it is, and it's hit on the ground. Foul, first base side. Arch will exchange baseballs and get a new one from home plate umpire Jorge Tehran. He's up to 77 pitches on the evening. Four strikeouts, four hits, and just one walk. He holds the ball behind his back, getting his signs from Cruz. Now he's ready. Set at the letters and time is called as Rodriguez had waited too long. Rodriguez 0 for 3. His last outing, that was against the Bees on Sunday. Played some first base and some left field in that one. And the 1-2 pitch on the way. Popped up down the line and left. A long run for Burgess, drifting and back and out of play. So the count holds one ball and two strikes. Rodriguez, the best average on the Blue Crabs, a late addition, so he's only played in about half of their games, but hitting 362 with a home run and 14 knocked in. Runner in scoring position, two men down, and the pitch from Porch fouled straight back. On the season, the Blue Crabs batting 260 as a team. But against York in the three-game set, just 203 coming into play. But they did take two of three in Southern Maryland. The one-two pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike three. <laughs> Curtis Parsh gets Devin Rodriguez to chase one in the dirt. His fifth strikeout victim of the evening. And he holds the score at one apiece, heading to the bottom of the sixth on 1350 WOYK. Money and business are essential to the strength of a community. So is cheering and celebration and music and fun. That's why York Revolution games, concerts, youth sports, special events, and more happen at a place called People's Bank Park. People's Bank has been serving York County for more than 150 years. Always cheering, always celebrating, always committed to the things that make York County great. And to you having a great time at People's Bank Park. People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. What's better than a food and beer festival? How about a free food and beef festival on the best lawn in town? Saturday, June 3rd at 11 a.m., it's Brews and Skews, presented by York Traditions Bank. Party in the outfield where the York Revolution play and enjoy skewered foods, 16 varieties of craft brews, music, and entertainment for all ages. There's even a cornhole tournament. That's Brews and Skews, the free party at People's Bank Park on Saturday, June 3rd. Get all the details at brewsandskews.com. Celebrate the history of our national pastime at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown. See priceless treasures that would bring your baseball memories to life. Cooperstown is where you, your family, and your friends can relive baseball's greatest moments and honor the all-time greats of the game. Plan your family visit today at BaseballHall.org. On air, online, and on your smartphone. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Top of the order due up for the Revs here. Bottom of the sixth. It's a 1-1 score. The Revs with three hits. One of them a Joel Guzman solo home run. Well over the arch nemesis in left. That was to lead off the fifth. Here's Derek Robinson. The first pitch on the way. Robinson shows bunt, pulls back, and takes the ball upstairs. 1-0. Thompson still on here. Has struck out six on the evening. And the 1-0 pitch to Robinson. That's down and in. Ball two.
The all-time wins leader at Southern Maryland with 31 in the pitch on the way. Fouled off left side and out of play. Robinson bats from the left side, the switch hitter, and the 2-1 pitch on the way. Fastball right there, and the count even at two balls and two strikes. Thompson has pitched for Southern Maryland now in six different seasons. But he has signed and gone to Mexico on several occasions before coming back each time to Southern Maryland. And the 2-2 pitch on the way. Hit high in the air and straight away towards left. Now coming towards the line is Rodriguez. The ball fades and into the corner he goes and he makes the catch for out number one. That ball had a lot of tail on it. The wind breezing slightly out that direction as well. And Rodriguez runs it down. One up and one down here in the sixth. Here's Angel Franco. Last year at Southern Maryland, Thompson went 5-9 with a 4.69 ERA. Struck out 85 and 132 in a third innings. And the first pitch to Franco, a breaking ball in for strike one. He really shined in the postseason in 2015 for the Blue Crabs. The 0-1 to Franco, and that is a little down and in. One ball and one strike to count. In the 2015 postseason, he went 2-0 with a 1.08 ERA. The 1-1 to Franco, hit sharply to the left side. That'll get on through for a base hit. Past the reach of Garcia, the shortstop. And Angel Franco has a one-out single. So in those two starts in the postseason, not only did he have a 1.08 ERA, but he struck out 19 while only walking two. To hit and now the batter. 0 for 2, a pop out and a ground out. Thompson working from the stretch, and the first pitch on the way, breaking ball upstairs. As Dell mentioned, Thompson made his debut against the Yankees. And in that one, worked five innings, gave up four hits and did not allow a run, four walks and two strikeouts. A 1-0-2 Tejeda, breaking ball drops in, it's one ball and one strike. And his first major league strikeout was Jorge Posada. Also got Melky Cabrera in the same inning. So really stacking up against the best in his very first outing. One and one account, Franco off of first and the pitch on the way, another breaking ball and another strike started to hit his shoulder, broke over the inner half and Thompson ahead one and two. Thompson has his sign and comes set at the letters. Drops the hands. The one-two pitch to Tejeda. Fought foul right side. After his time in the Cincinnati system, Thompson spent a year with the Minnesota system in 2012 and then the Mets the following year before coming to the Atlantic League. One and two the count. Franco off of first. And the pitch on the way to Tejeda, another breaking ball and a swing and a miss, strike three. Tejeda well out in front, went to a knee. Thompson now with his seventh strikeout of the ball game, and there's two away in the sixth. And maybe the biggest, slowest curve that he's thrown tonight, a little bit different look there. Ended up, from here at least, looked like almost belt high, and it ends up on the floor, as Mace likes to say. So here's Michael Burgess, two away, 1-1 one, one our score. Thompson sets. Allen sets up away, and the pitch on the way actually misses inside as Allen had to reach far to the backhand. 
Again, the infield plays Burgess well to pull. Garcia, the shortstop, close to the bag at second. Lozada, the second baseman, over towards the hole. And the 1-0 pitch on the way, down and away, ball two. And Dale, I find it quite interesting. The team seemed to always play Burgess to pull, but he seems to be just as effective the other way if you look at just the eye test. Yeah. I don't know what the numbers say, but he certainly has opposite field power. There's no doubt about it. The 2-0 pitch on the way, and he hits this one high in the air, deep to right field. Conant back at the warning track at the wall, and this one is gone. Michael Burgess, a two-run shot. His sixth home run of the year, and the Revs take the lead. It is three to one. Now he's got power to right field, too. That looked off speed, I thought. And he just stayed back. Nice, easy swing. And when that man hits it on the barrel, it is going to fly. Up onto the home run patio. Justifying its name with that one. And here comes Joel Guzman. First pitch on the way, fastball upstairs. And with that home run, Curtis Parch now in line for his first victory of the season. The 1 0 to Joel, and that's down and away. It's 2 0. It's Katie Rakes is a winner tonight, isn't she? Two times so. The 1 0 to Guzman hit on the ground sharply and just wide of the third base bag. Down towards the left field bullpen. I mean, when Burgess barrels one up, you can just hear it. It has quite a distinct sound. And it is pure. The 1 1 in on the hands, and Guzman had to jump back and out of the way of that one. So now it's a hitter's count, three and one to Joel. Two down, two runs in. Thompson winds. Here's the pitch, and Guzman bounces it right back to the mound. Thompson settles and throws the first, and that will retire the side. But two hits in the inning, and two runs on the board, thanks to a two-run home run from Michael Burgess, his sixth of the season. And the Revs out in front, 3-1, to one, heading to the seventh. Daryl Henry will take you home when we come back on 1350 WOYK. Sports injury? Walk into Wellspan Urgent Orthopedics for immediate care. No appointment is ever needed. Our orthopedic and sports medicine specialists are here to treat you. Visit wellspan.org forward slash urgent orthopedics today for hours at our York and Hanover locations. Hey, Revs fans, get points or great rewards just by supporting your team through the new Revolution Rewards Program. Use the new York Revolution app to receive and earn points for ballpark food, store discounts, stadium tours, and more. Available through the Apple and Google Play stores, the York Revolution app also features team news and exclusive content, contests and promotions for Revolution prizes, online ticket purchases, live game streaming, and more. Download the York Revolution app today. Free stuff by supporting your team? That's Revs time. Hear that? It's the sound of summer. Sound nice? Call Kona Ice. We do it all. Schools, sporting events, parties, both corporate and birthday. You name it, we'll be there. We bring the party to you. If you need a little bit of fun in your life, we're the shaved ice truck for you. Oh, and we fundraise too. This summer, cool down with Kona Ice. Give us a call at 1-800-KONA-ICE or visit us online at www.kona-ice.com. Kona Ice. Flavor our world. The radio home of the Revs. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Curtis Parch with the lead. He's back out there. It's a 3-1 to one lead for the Revs as we go to the seventh inning. He had to battle a little bit in the six, the one out single, and Vaughn with two outs would steal second. And it was a pretty good battle with Rodriguez, but Parch would win it on the strikeout, and at 80 pitches, he will begin the seventh. 
Zach Cohn leads it off. A strikeout and a flyout tonight. Here's the first pitch. And it's up and in. Cone, Allen, Palmero, 6 7 8. It'll be interesting to see what kind of leash Curtis Parch has here in the seventh. As we mentioned last inning, 92 the most pitches he's thrown this year. Fires and a line drive over the leap of Tree and Fell at third. Down the line and left. Burgess into the corner to retrieve it, and the throw to second will be late. Cone in with a stand up double to begin the seventh inning. Now, a lot of times, Mace will leave his starters in until the go-ahead run ends up coming to the plate. He doesn't, or until the tying run, I should say, he does not want his starter to take the loss. And it is the tying run coming up now, and here comes Mace. And he will go to the bullpen here. So he gave Parch one hitter to begin the seventh, and Cone leads it off with a double. That'll be the end of the night, but he can feel great about that one. Six plus innings, it'll be a quality start no matter what. By far his best outing. And he really seemed to find something here tonight as Brad Allen makes his way in. A nice ovation from the crowd as he heads into the dugout. And a pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. Well, Matt, I don't know what you trust more, your sinuses or Joe Morgan's iPad, but what do we have weather-wise? It looks like something's coming. Great. We have played a full five innings, though, and with the revs in front, I would not be so sad if this one was <laughs> all of a sudden ended, especially with an 11 a.m. game tomorrow. I'm sure the players would feel similarly. No one wants to sit through a rain delay tonight. I was just thinking the same. So Allen will go through his warm-ups. And Parch, 82 pitches, 58 strikes tonight, only 24 balls. It was six plus innings. That was only the fifth hit that he has given up. Struck out five, walked only one. That is a, a Big time start from him. It had been 10 days since his last one, and the last one was the one in which he really had to battle the most, kind of battling himself, I thought, down at Sugar Land. And a lot of it with him is the arm slot and the release, and he seemed to be in command right from the get-go tonight. Our broadcast brought to you in part by Wolf's Bus Lines, the Pretzel Twist, Neighborhood Sure Save Markets, Turkey Hill Minute Markets, Atline Foods, and D's Nuts. Speaking of Wolf, I don't know if you saw, but Don was here for Rocky Blyer. Was he really? No, I did not see him the other day. Don is our driver extraordinaire. Navigating places that no man should, <laughs> like LaGuardia. Here's Luis Allen, the runner at second, nobody out. Revs a three to one lead, Allen's first pitch to Allen is hit in the air in center and Witherspoon has it lined up. Makes the catch, they'll tag from second, Cone heading to third and the throw will bounce in a little late. So a fly ball to center from Luis Allen greeting Brad Allen. Witherspoon a couple steps over toward right center to squeeze that. Really good arm, too. Yeah. We haven't really seen him have to let too many go this year, but he did there and tried to get Cone going second or third, and it was certainly a lot closer than I would have expected. So now a runner at third with one out for Patrick Palmero, who will try to at least hit one on the ground and make it a one-run game. Allen ready to go, first pitch, slider, grounded to third, tree and fouls, got it, looked at home, but will throw to first for the shore out. Boy, he thought about it. RBI ground out, it's three to two. He would have loved to have cut down the run and saved that run for Parch, and he had a chance, but didn't want to risk it. If there's any doubt, I guess you go to first base. Right, I mean, when that run is, is not the tying run, you know, it's tempting, but you just have to take your medicine. 
And in that case, goes to first and, and gets the sure out. A medicinal play made by the Rebs there. So with two down, here's KK. And Allen misses down and away. You're on fire tonight, Matt. Two for two, you are. KK one for two with a double and a run scored. Pitch from Allen is a little bit low. Revs last used Brad on Saturday. One, two, three, seventh against Sugarland. It was the first game in which they'd moved him to set up. He fires down and in here, three and oh. Three runs, five hits, one error for York, two five and oh for Southern Maryland. Allen ready, the kick and the pitch. And right over for a strike. This is our K-man tonight. The Hawaii native making just his third start. DHing the pitch. And he pops it up, straight back foul and out of play. And Allen back to run it full. Chance of Moz sticks. I had a rudder's wrap up here in the booth tonight. Here's the payoff pitch. Strike three called, fastball got him looking. 91 at the knees as Allen marches off. He retires all three that he faces. Fletch now motions for Chase Hutchinson to loosen for the eighth. The one inherited run scores, one hit, and nobody left. Stretch time here at People's Bank Park. It's the Revs three and the Blue Crabs two. York Mitsubishi is seeing red. Don't miss the red tight sale during the Memorial Day sale. Red tides make pricing easy because you get the bottom line. Buy a new 2017 Outlander Sport, only $17,995. 2017 Mirage G4s, 12695 America's best priced new car. 2017 Mitsubishi Outlanders, Outlander Sports, Mirages, and Lancers come with available 0% financing to qualify buyers. And all new Mitsubishis come with their 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. York Mitsubishi, Route 30 and Roosevelt Avenue, York. Money and business are essential to the strength of a community. So is cheering and celebration and music and fun. That's why York Revolution games, concerts, youth sports, special events and more happen at a place called People's Bank Park. People's Bank has been serving York County for more than 150 years. Always cheering, always celebrating, always committed to the things that make York County great. And to you having a great time at People's Bank Park. People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. This is Dustin Hawkinson with the Keystone Sports Network. For the best Penn State football analysis and commentary, listen to Sports Radio 1350 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8 a.m. and after Revs games for the Keystone Kickoff Show. We'll bring you game reviews, player evaluations, and recruiting news. So for the best in Penn State talk, tune to Sports Radio 1350 WOYK for the Keystone Kickoff Show. Brought to you locally by your neighborhood SureSave Markets. All about local sports. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Hi, this is Emoe Polanco, and you're listening to Your Revolution Baseball on the home of the revolution. Sport Radio 1350 WOYK. Daryl Thompson stays in, bottom seven. First pitch to Travis Witherspoon is up high. The Rebs with a three to two lead. Witherspoon one for two here tonight. Here's the one L, and it's over for a strike down the middle. Thompson at 88 pitches at the beginning of the inning. That was his 90th. Here's the one one. And it's in the dirt. Blue Crabs with lefty Robert Carson up in the bullpen. Two long balls have hurt Thompson tonight. Guzman a solo shot. Burgess a two runner. The two one. And a swing and a miss. Witherspoon gearing up. Thompson took a little off. Lights have taken effect here at People's Bank Park. Dusk on this gray evening. Comfortably in the 60s, though. 
And the 2-2 curveball, he swings and pops it up at short. Garcia froze to find it up in the gray sky. Now backing out, and he gloves it. Makes the one-hand grab, one away. Our broadcast brought to you in part by Image 360, Yingling's Ice Cream, Highmark, Isaacs, Sheets, Ace Distributing, Stambaugh Plumbing and Heating, and Hatfield. Here's Ryan Dent. Hutchinson getting ready for the eighth. Dent a strikeout and a sack bunt tonight. Tomorrow, as Matt mentioned, it is an 11 a.m. start. First pitch is popped up again. Another one at short. And Garcia coming in on this one toward the front of the dirt. And he squeezes that. Two up, two down on pops to short. We'll be on right at the end of hour two of Dan Patrick tomorrow. Really working hard on that pregame show. <laughs> Luis Cruz and struck out and grounded out. Each team with just five hits. Thompson the pitch and a little high. On the 1 0. And he swings, loops it, shallow center, Garcia out, and the second baseman, Lozada, goes into a slide and makes the grab. A looper to shallow center, and it looked like Cruz might have a hit, but Lozada sprinting out and sliding right next to Garcia, heading out, makes a fine play. It's a one, two, three, seven. It's on to the eighth, Chase Hutchinson coming in. Revs lead the Crabs, three, two. Mid-Atlantic Industrial Equipment offers quality material handling equipment and services. Along with a full line of unicarriers and Komatsu forklifts, you'll find Genie Aerial Lifts, IPC Eagle Floor Scrubbers, and Penalift Loading Dock Equipment. Mid-Atlantic can provide rentals, pre-owned equipment, service, and replacement parts for most makes. When you need the best for your business, call Mid-Atlantic Industrial Equipment at 888-383-LIFT. That's 888-383-5438 or online at Mid-Atlantic industrial.com can't get enough of the birds woyk has you covered join us all season on mondays at six for the baltimore baseball show hosted by award-winning orioles and national baseball writer dan Connolly from baltimorebaseball.com exclusive in-depth interviews plus the latest insight and analysis on the orioles every week talking baseball with the birds mondays at six the baltimore baseball show on sports radio 1350 woyk first in york first in sports What's better than a food and beer festival? How about a free food and beef festival on the best lawn in town? Saturday, June 3rd at 11 a.m., it's Brews and Skews, presented by York Traditions Bank. Party in the outfield where the York Revolution play and enjoy skewered foods, 16 varieties of craft brews, music, and entertainment for all ages. There's even a cornhole tournament. That's Brews and Skews, the free party at People's Bank Park on Saturday, June 3rd. Get all the details at brewsandskews.com. Your teams all the time. It's only place for local sports. Sports Radio 1350 WOIK. Eighth inning brought to you by York Dental Sleep Therapy. Tired of feeling the effects of sleep apnea or sleepless nights due to your CPAP? Dr. Bell might have an option to help you. Make your appointment today and let Dr. Bell help determine which treatment is best for your needs. Exceptional care is just a phone call away. Call 316-1299 or visit YorkSleep.com. York Dental Sleep Therapy, 450 West Market Street in Hallam. Now Hutchinson is in. Pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. The switch hitting Lozada leads off top of the order and checks his swing on a ball low. The appeal to first says no go. Three to two York. Now, between innings, our head groundskeeper Joe Morgan talked with Revs GM Jod Gibson and the crew chief and the tarp crew is gathered 
down behind the Rebs bullpen. This is the 1 0. And a comebacker. Hutchinson gloves it. Shoulder high. He'll throw to first. Tejeda gets his foot on the bag. Well before the arrival of Lozada. And there's one away. What have we, Matt? It looks like just a little pop up. Pretty quickly moving, but we might get hit hard for five or ten minutes if I had to guess. Now one down. You're full of good news. <laughs> Here's Edwin Garcia. The game is going quickly, so <laughs> maybe sneak another one in. I don't know. First pitch. Fastball. That's in there for a strike. Hutchinson 2-0 in 13 outings. Got the win Saturday night. 13 and a third innings, eight hits, one unearned run. As it has gotten darker here, but that might also be nightfall. Here's a fastball, and he doesn't get the call. Well, if you're listening in Spring Grove, tell us how long the rain is falling. There you go. Yeah. That's where it's coming from right now. On the pitch. That's down and in. Of course, Mal Fishman tells me I, I shouldn't look at radar. I should just walk out in the rain, and that's how I should figure out what the weather will do. Yeah. Let's get the forecasts on his watch. <laughs> it's an old school man who does not believe in all your fancy gadgets. Now the 2-1. And that's over for a strike outside corner. Now is a longtime scout who is often here. Not tonight, but might see him again tomorrow. Hutchinson the 2-2. And a breaking ball down and away. Well, the heart of their order is coming up. It's a big spot here, full count. Here with one out in the top of the eighth. Hutchinson the stretch. The payoff pitch. Swing a ground ball, second base. Right at Franco. He gloves, he throws to first. Two away. Here in the top of the eighth. On our York Mitsubishi out of town scoreboard, Somerset has gone ahead 5 4 in Lancaster in the sixth. New Britain and Bridgeport tied at one in the fifth at Harbor Yard. And Sugarland a 1-0 lead at Long Island in the seventh behind Jake Hale. And Brian Pounds does have his first Skeeters hit. He's one for two at last check. Here's Corey Vaughn. And a ball down and in. And Pounds playing at third base tonight. One of a couple new additions for Sugarland after leaving York. There's the 1-0. And that's a cross for a strike. They also added Hector Oliveira, Cuban native who spent a couple of years with the Braves. Ball on a strike to Vaughn. Hutchinson ready. Pitch is swung on and missed. Change up. Vaughn one for three tonight, two strikeouts, then a single and a steal in the sixth inning. Parch left him on base with the game tied at the time, and then Burgess gave York the lead with the homer in the bottom half. Hutchinson ready. One, two. Fastball a little high. And that one cracking the mitt at 94 on the board. Ready to go. The 2-2. Two -two. Ooh, look out. In near the feet, and it did clip the top of Vaughn's shoe as it ricocheted to the backstop. So it's a hit by pitch. And now Michael Snyder to the plate. Their most dangerous threat representing the go-ahead run. That's not what Hutchinson wanted to do, and now he will have to deal with their cleanup man. Now 
And lefty comes set. First offering is right there at the knees. Strike called, and that's where he wants it with Snyder at bat. Well, Hutchinson delivers, and a swing and a tapper hits softly, and Chase will get to it, gloving. Running toward first, he underhands to Tejeda, and the inning is over. A scoreless top of the eighth for Chase Hutchinson. He tracks down that little dribbler himself and underhands it over to Tejeda. No runs, no hits, and one left. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning with the Rebs in front, three to two. Enter Rogers Summer of Freedom Sweepstakes today. Look for the entry star. Purchase participating products. Scan your Rogers Rewards card or enter VIP information at checkout and automatically be entered to win your choice of a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport, Ram 1500 Bighorn Quad Cab, or Dodge Challenger RT from Stetler. Drive better, drive Stetler. Free gas for a year and one of thousands of prizes, including Red Bull, Pepsi, and Pennsylvania Lottery scratch-off tickets. Must be a Rudders VIP to enter. Rudders, why go anywhere? Else. This is Dustin Hawkinson with the Keystone Sports Network. For the best Penn State football analysis and commentary, listen to Sports Radio 1350 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8 a.m. and after Revs games for the Keystone Kickoff Show. We'll bring you game reviews, player evaluations, and recruiting news. So for the best in Penn State talk, tune to Sports Radio 1350 WOYK for the Keystone Kickoff Show. Brought to you locally by your neighborhood SureSave Markets. The mission of Big Brothers Big Sisters of York and Adams Counties is to provide children facing adversity with strong and enduring, professionally supported, one-to-one -one relationships that change their lives for the better forever. It is proven that Big Brothers Big Sisters mentoring programs have a direct impact on children achieving higher aspirations, greater confidence, better relationships, and educational success, and avoiding risky behavior. Please visit a afewhours.org for more information on becoming a mentor. It is time well spent. The Revolution plays here. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Bottom of the eighth, Rebs a 3-2 lead. And some rain has just begun, lightly for now. Right-hander Zach Thornton, the new pitcher for Southern Maryland. Pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. So Daryl Thompson goes seven, five hits, three runs, all on a pair of homers. He struck out seven and did not walk any. Just the home runs that hurt him. The Revs doing the most, really, with their five hits. Trienfell will lead it off. A light rain here as we begin the bottom of the eighth. First pitch is down and away. Thornton just added today. It's the league's first look at him. On the 1 0. And a fastball, a little wide. Trienfell a strikeout and a pop up. Thornton had been at Triple A with the Mets most recently. He deals. And a line drive left side. It's a base hit. As Trienfell slashes it out of the reach of Garcia going toward the hole. A low liner single. And the leadoff man on here in the home eighth. It is not even completely dark yet. As Jared Martin gets loose for the ninth. Tarp crew is ready just in case. Hopefully we can continue on and a ball loose from the Revs bullpen will bring time. And this is an interesting situation for Martin because if you start a game and have a starter go an inning and the rain comes, oftentimes they don't go back out there. You don't often have that scenario pop up with a closer getting loose and then either entering or not being able to enter. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Hopefully Martin can come in and do what he's been doing just so well of late. Oh, he has been electric. Here's Derek Robinson who shows a bunt. Oh, man. Pitch outside, and Trienfell caught between first and second, and Snyder runs at him to call him out, or to tag him out. 
So a missed sign, perhaps, as Trienfell was on his way to second base and was caught in the middle. I think that was just, he, he got too much of a secondary lead, got a little aggressive, and Allen was ready. That was a huge secondary lead. There's a ball low on Robinson, 2-0. and He is 0 for 3 tonight. Was trying to bunt him over, the 2-0 pitch, and way in, that'll go to the backstop. Well, and sometimes on a bunt attempt, you'll, you'll have a base runner who anticipates that bunt being laid down and kind of start to go and, and get a little further out. But I don't think it was a case of him supposed to be running. Now, pitch in at the knees for a strike, three and one. Next one, and a ground ball toward the middle. At second, Lozada to his right. He gets squarely in front of it, and throw over to first is in time. Our broadcast brought to you by York Water Company, Brickers, Pizza Box and Hoagie Shop, York Volkswagen, and Penn State York. All right, two down, here's Angel Franco. And pitch to him is a called strike, outside corner, starting and stopping. Well, at the moment, we're able to play through the rain. It picks up a little bit. It's the 0-1, and it runs inside. And looking at the radar, I don't think we're going to get a delay here. It looks like the worst of it has already missed us to the south, and we're just getting the north edge of it. Pitch. Swing and a miss, a slider down. Thornton, a teammate of Chase Hutchinson's at Las Vegas the last couple of years. The one-two, and it's hit in the air, foul down the left field side, and fading out of play right off the Grand Slam brew house. Southern Maryland in the ninth will have Rodriguez, Cone, and Allen, five, six, and seven. Let's go, Let's go, That's who Jared Martin prepares to face following Hutchinson. We mentioned was with Thornton the last couple years in the Mets system. Franco one for three tonight, singled and scored in the sixth, and Thornton steps off. 6-4 righty, and now with the pitch, and a bouncer foul over by the Rebs' dugout. It's been in the A's, Pirates, and Mets systems. Triple A with Pittsburgh and New York. And then Team Israel, let's not forget. <laughs> it's the pitch. Swinging a grounder foul up the first baseline, right past the tarp. Matt, did you ever get one of those shirts or hats? I didn't. No? I, I, I still might at some point. Never got around to it, but as I think I mentioned on a previous broadcast, John Gibson showed me his Jew Crew shirt, and I'm <laughs> yeah. a bit jealous. Pitch to Franco is fouled off, third base side. Well, I'm sure it it's one that you'll still be able to obtain. Those might become a collector's item, in fact. It's always eBay. <laughs> Time asked for by the catcher, Allen. And we're ready. One, two. Swing and a miss. A high fastball. He tried to stop, but Went more than halfway around, and that'll end the inning. No runs, one hit, and nobody left. And we go to the ninth. Jared Martin will try to make it three games in a row, finishing it off with the Revs leading 3-2. Kids today, with Facebook, texting, TV, and video games, seems like fresh air and sunshine are things of the past. Remember playing catch, climbing trees, wholesome backyard fun? 
Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care remembers, give them lush grass, healthy trees, the good old outdoors. America is baseball and apple pie. Kids have every reason to stay inside. Don't let your lawn be one of them. Heritage Lawn and Landscape Care, world-class care right in your backyard. 717-292-9994. Having the gang over to watch the game? Keep them happy with great Best Jet products from your neighborhood sure save markets. Football fans, hockey fans, basketball fans, everyone's a fan of game day party planners with 1893 deli items. Best Jet hot dogs go great with Best Jet kettle cooked chips. Or serve up a couple Best Jet rising crust pizzas with 12 packs of Best Jet soda. Throw the best game day party ever with Best Jet products. Shop Sobble's Markets in Shrewsbury, Stewartstown, Whiteford and East York, Wetzel's in Glenrock, and Nell's Market Fresh Foods in Spry. Money and business are essential to the strength of a community. So is cheering and celebration and music and fun. That's why York Revolution games, concerts, youth sports, special events and more happen at a place called People's Bank Park. People's Bank has been serving York County for more than 150 years. Always cheering, always celebrating, always committed to the things that make York County great. And to you having a great time at People's Bank Park. People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Your home for Revolution Baseball. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Head of the nine, Revs a 3-2 lead. Jared Martin is on. The electric closer pitching change brought to you by Maple Donuts. And here in recent weeks, he's made a slight mechanical adjustment that has taken him from good or great to unhittable. And now tonight, he's going to try to pitch in less than perfect conditions to finish this game off. He has asked for some new dirt that the Revs grounds crew applies to the mound and the landing area. They'll try to make it three consecutive games with a save. He had two ground outs and a pop-up on Sunday, which is a departure from what he had done before that, striking out almost everybody, including Saturday night when he struck out all three against Sugarland in his first outing as the team's officially named closer. He'll have Rodriguez, Cone, and Allen, five, six, and seven for the Blue Crabs. Martin, no record, a 1.04 ERA in 17 games. 17 and a third innings, nine hits. Four runs, two earned. 10 walks and 25 Ks. And an opponent's average of 148. Is that good? I hear it's not bad. <laughs> Before Sunday, when all three outs were put in play, he had struck out 20 in his previous 11 and a third. Right now, 20 in his last 12 and a third. That's not too shabby either. So Rodriguez, the left-hand hitter, will dig in to lead off. 0 for 3, two foul outs and a K. And time asked for as somebody's screaming from the Blue Crab dugout for some reason about the LED boards. That was a less than polite way to go about it. <laughs> awesome. And now Martin ready. And the first pitch is a fastball for a strike at 92. Rain has really slowed down. Martin fires, and a fastball, strike two called at 94. Three to two the lead, trying to slam the door for Parch. Looking to pick up his first Rebs win. Outfield plays Rodriguez the other way. And Martin, the 0-2, it's outside. Rodriguez loading up, the hands move, but he did not pull the trigger. And that's a really good 0-2 pitch right there. 92 down and away off the plate. 
a pitch that if you miss your spot a little bit is still a pitcher's pitch, but also has a good chance of getting the hitter to chase. One, two, swing and a miss. He struck him out. A slider away. And Jared Martin with a whiff to begin the nine. 87 on the slider. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, he really has big league stuff, the way he's pitching right now. I mean, he's going fastball. 94 all the way up to 97 he's maxed out the other night on a slider at 87. Here's Zach Cohn, fastball missed away. Cohn one for three, doubled and scored in the seventh. I've heard his stuff described as being almost unfair at times, as good as he's been of late. The 1-0. And a foul looped off to the first base side into the seats. Daryl's going to the binder, so we're about to get a really good nugget. <laughs> Stay tuned. Well, I'll... Uh, maybe. I hiked it. It's the pitch. And a swing and a foul back, out of play, one and two. I hesitate to do this, because I never want to, you know, speak too soon, but I was curious myself. One hit allowed his last 11 and a third, and 11 appearances. That's how good he's been. He nods yes, here's the stretch. One, two, and a check. He went on it. Slider in the dirt, and Cohn can't hold off. Strikeout, strikeout for Martin here in the top of the nine, and the Revs an out away from a third straight win. A pair of strikeouts on the slider earlier this season. It was... Almost like when he threw the slider, sometimes they were saying why, because the fastball was so good. Well, the adjustment that he's made, the slider is now just as good. Here's Luis Allen, and Martin misses down and in. But now he's got command of both, and both are unhittable. The two together. Well, and the other thing is that the fastball at 94 pretty consistently is not a straight fastball whatsoever. No, it's not. That has sinked the other direction. Here's the 1-0. And a check. Did Allen go? Appeal to first. Yep. He holds his hand out, looking at first base. As if to say, no, I didn't. But Martin evens it up with him. A ball and a strike. Tarp crew has been given clearance to leave the area behind the Revs bullpen. Here's the 1-1. Swing a bouncing ball to short. Dent's got it. He pumps. He fires. Game over. And Jarrett Martin, three for three in saves on this now three-game winning streak. He stays perfect. Another one, two, three, nine. And the Rebs have won three in a row. Final score tonight. It's York three and Southern Maryland two. And Curtis Parch with his first win, and the bullpen once again is airtight. Couple of long balls supplying the offense, Guzman and Burgess. And the Revs win another close one, another low scoring game, which has been the MO here on this three game winning streak. Tonight they do it in two hours and 14 minutes, beating the threat of the rain, which never did materialize, and beating the Blue Crabs in the first meeting since April 27th between the division rivals.